we're here at the DJI booth. My name is Patrick. I'm the professional product specialist uh, here at NAB. So I'm going to walk you through the Master Wheels and also our Force Pro. But again, we have the Master Wheels here. So the idea behind the Master Wheels is taking an old classic, a gearhead, and making it uh, compatible with a remote gimbal system. So behind me, we have our Ronin 2. It's our three-axis stabilized gimbal. Uh, it's been out for about a year, and now we're introducing these two new controllers, and I'll walk you through the Master Wheels. So the Master Wheels, we have pan, tilt, and roll control. We have three wheels. Each wheel is actually removable uh, because as you can see, the console is quite large. So if you're in a space where, let's say you're operating in the back of a car and you don't have a lot of space, you can actually remove all of these wheels and mount them elsewhere. So that takes a lot of pressure off of operators for needing a lot of space to be able to operate in and can make them, uh, make them a little bit more flexible on set. Uh, as well as just being able to operate the gimbal, pan, tilt, and roll, we also have full control of the Ronin here on this screen. Uh, so you have full Ronin control. So there's an LCD monitor on the back of the Ronin, which allows you to control motor function, smooth track function, uh, monitor power, uh, uh, camera functionality. And you also get the same functionality out of the wheels right here. And that's what makes the DJI Master Wheel so important is because you never have to go up and change the settings on the uh, Ronin itself, but you can do it right from the wheels. So that makes it a lot more convenient when you're on set and you know, precious moments are, are definitely precious. Uh, there's also motion control features that will eventually be working. Uh, we're, we're still working them out and uh, by the time they'll be shipping, they'll be absolutely perfect. You can record uh, moves as you go and then play them back and pause them. So it'll, it'll uh, allow operators to be able to do very precise motion control moves and repeat them uh, over and over and over again. So the DJI Master Wheels are made to be a, a remote system. So we also have this remote uh, transmitter that operates in 2.4 and 5.8. But for situations where you have a lot of radio uh, interference going on like we do here at NAB, we also have a wired connection. So that wired connection, our longest one is 30 meters right now, but eventually we'll be making shorter and longer cables. Uh, to accommodate any sort of jib. So right now we have it running up the jib arm. So we have uh, both wired and uh, wireless functions covered. And here we have the Force Pro. So the Force Pro is just this unit right here. What it is, is it's an IMU remote controller. An IMU means inertial measurement unit. So what it's doing is it's taking my movements and then interpreting them into pan and tilt. So as of right now, it's basically one to one where if I, were, I move a degree, it moves a degree with pan, tilt, and roll. So there's, a, there's plenty of use cases for the Force Pro. Uh, right now we're in sort of a handheld mode. It gives you a handheld feel while remotely operating your gimbal. And then you, you will be also able to put it on top of a fluid head and operate as if it was on a fluid head. Or I've done also a shoulder mount and give you that really gritty handheld feel uh, remotely while you're still operating a gimbal. Uh, both the Force Pro and the Master Wheels have full uh, compatibility with the Ronin 2, and you'll be able to change settings remotely, which is also nice, uh, and they'll be able to transmit up to a mile away. Uh, so that allows you to uh, put your gimbal at a safe distance if you're doing something uh, at the top of a jib, crane, uh, if you're doing a lot of car stuff, car mounts, you know, all the kit and caboodle. Hi there, my name is Chase Hagen. I work at Aerie in the Burbank office as part of the camera team, and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Alexa LF. It's our new camera system that we're showing here at NAB. It's the debut for the North American market. We released the camera back, uh, or announced the camera, I should say, back in February. We showed it at the BSC Expo there with some of our new lenses. And the idea with the Alexa LF is it's the new Aerie large format camera system. And that's a key word there. With Aerie, we believe in everything as a system. So not just releasing a new camera, but new lenses to take advantage of the format. And this is not our first large format camera. We had the Alexa 65, our rental only high-end product that we released a few years ago. And based on everyone's response to that, it was very positive, even more positive than we could ever have imagined. And everyone wanted to use this larger format to express emotion, to add dimensionality to their images. And so we thought, well, that's an Alexa sensor taken, turned on its side and put 
together times three. So what happens if we were to experiment with a format that's a little more manageable in the sense that there's more lenses that cover it, allows us to build a slightly smaller camera than the Alexa 65, actually decently smaller, just slightly bigger than the Alexa SXT, which is now the Alexa LF. So that's taking two of our fantastic LF3 sensors, same image sensor that we use in the Alexa, the Mini, and the Mira, and putting them on their sides and putting them together. So we have now a format that's slightly larger than full frame. That's why we're calling it large format. It's a little bit bigger, and it opens a whole new creative possibility doorway with our new lenses as well. So the camera body is actually about the same size as the Alexa SXT, uh, which is the current flagship 35 millimeter camera that we make. And uh, it's got the same built-in wireless video system, has the same ergonomics, so the same accessories you have for your Alexa XT, your Alexa Classic, your Alexa SXT will all fit on the camera. We didn't change any of the mounting points. Same great Alexa viewfinder, same body shape and technology. Again, just slightly bigger and slightly heavier than an SXT, but not nearly as big as an Alexa 65. It shoots ProRes or Airy Raw like you're used to, so the totally uncompressed 12-bit logarithmic unencrypted Airy Raw is in the camera. And the big thing about this camera is we didn't want to compromise. Some other manufacturers have built large format cameras or full frame cameras, but they've compromised in the maximum frame rate or recording capabilities of those cameras. We have uncompressed Airy Raw on this camera up to 150 frames per second. That's a huge deal. Some other cameras can't even go past 30, for example. Uh, so that's a big deal to be able to not compromise with image quality, same image as an Alexa, but also not compromise with maximum frame rate. So we're using the exact same large pixels in the camera. The camera has three sensor modes. It has a full open gate entire sensor of 4.5K total resolution. 4,448 pixels by 3,096 pixels. So it's still a very tall sensor, which is what we like here at Aerie. So you have 4.5K open gate mode. You have a 4K UHD mode, which is closer to full frame, but somewhere in between full frame and Super 35 in terms of the imaging area. So you have a chance of covering that with some of your Super 35 lenses. So it doesn't mean every Super 35 lens, but you'll have a better chance of covering that 16 by nine LF sensor mode, which is 4K UHD. It's 3840 by 2160. The last sensor mode is the LF239 mode. It's a flat or non-anamorphic 239 shape of a sensor mode. So it's full width of the sensor at 4.5K, but not as tall. And that allows us to crank the camera up to 150 frames in Airy Raw. So fantastic compatibility also with all existing accessories like the WC4 and hand unit. And the big thing about the system is the new lens mount, which I'll talk about right now and we'll see the lenses later. So with a new format, you need new glass to cover it. So we actually went back to the drawing board because we looked at the PL mount and we said, well, that's an old mount. It was designed with a 52 millimeter focal flange distance, which means it needed to carry a mirror shutter behind it to clear that. But we said, well, we don't have a mirror shutter. Let's bring the lens design to the next level and build lenses that are actually lighter than some of the Super 35 lenses, Super 35 lenses, I should say, uh, before them by taking the mount and going from 52 millimeters down to 44 millimeters. And we call it the LPL mount. So it allows for a bigger rear aperture and shorter focal flange distance to make the best lenses possible. So you have the perfect image coverage with a larger opening in the back through the LPL mount onto that bigger sensor. So at the core of the new LF system, again, large format system from Aerie with the Alexa LF, the idea again was a system. So we have to have lenses to go with it. And rather than just taking the existing PL mount and using that mount as the basis, we said, well, we're going with a larger format anyways. Let's go with the new mount design that they kind of came up with because it offered the best optical performance in terms of designing lenses. So the LPL mount has a shorter focal flange distance, but the nice thing about it is with an adapter, which you can see back there, you can actually automatically insert that adapter and have full compatibility to the existing PL range of glass. So it's instant, there's no changing the mount. You just insert it in there and you're ready to go. The focal flange distance is correct. The mount locks, it even transmits lens data. So LDS and Cook Eye data go through the mount and onto the LF. So all your existing lenses will fit on the camera. And that doesn't mean that it's gonna cover, it's not an optical expander, but it will allow you to use existing PL lenses and also PL full frame lenses from other manufacturers in here. But when we went to the LPL mount, we designed a whole new family of lenses. They're called Signature Primes. And after 100 years, Airy turned 100 years last year, we kind of have come up with the first set of lenses that we really consider to have the full Airy look. We've made some great lenses in the past, like the Master Primes, the Ultra Primes, but those were with the help of other companies. This is the first set of lenses to be truly designed from the ground up by Airy with what we call our Airy Signature, hence the name Signature Primes. And it's also called Signature Prime because there's elements of the lenses that allow DPs to create their own signature. Like for example, the front and rear elements are removable and can be replaced 
with elements that are uh, single coated, so they're almost uncoated with just a protective coating for the glass that allow for more flaring. So you can add just the front, just the rear, or both to have four different looks, clean, front, rear, or both, for more flaring and more imaging characteristics. And all the lenses have a magnetic rear filter holder to attach a net or a gel or any kind of filter right to the back of the lens magnetically, and you're good to go. So they have all this kind of aspects about them that let you as a DP have a signature to even our own Aerie Signature Prime lenses. They're all very light. They're two pounds lighter on average than their equivalent Master Prime, yet they have bigger image coverage. Why? Because we're making the lenses out of magnesium. No one's really done this before because it's very hard to do, but we're able to make the lenses all out of magnesium, which means they're much lighter. They're all T1.8 except for the two longest ones, and we're going to make 16 in total. So we're going to go from 12 millimeters all the way up to 280 millimeters all 1.8 except for the last two, which will be a 2.5 and 2.8. So very high speed lenses with still all the great characteristics we've had before, like no breathing and excellent edge to edge performance and great skin tone reproduction. We really focused on that. We asked the engineers to spend really a lot of time looking at skin tones, not just charts, not just landscapes where sharpness is important, but skin tones and the creamy rendering and smooth rendering of skin tones. And creamy and smooth are some words that DPs like Dan Lawson, who shot Shape of Water when he shot our test with the Signature Primes, that's how he described them. They have a very unique feeling. They're not vintage, but they have this feeling that's different than the modern lenses. So they have a great new look for filmmakers, and we're really excited to be able to offer these. We will offer an LPL mount for your Amira, your Mini, your Alexa Classic, XT or SXT, so you can use these lenses on those cameras. Hello and welcome to Sony NAB 2018 booth. Uh, we're excited uh, with the announcement of a couple of new products. One of the most popular one, obviously, is FS5 Mark II. Uh, the FS5 camera, it's been received based on the size and ergonomics, one of the best uh, uh, balanced cameras for the past few years that we had. So what we did with the FS5 Mark II, we kept exactly the same ergonomics because it's been received very well in the market. But a couple of new differences that uh, we have is we went back to the drawing board and used the knowledge we have from the color science of the very successful launch of the Venice camera that we had and implemented and tweaked the sensor on FS5 Mark II to as a default look and picture profile is going to have a more of the cinematic, uh, natural skin tone uh, look to it, uh, right out of the box. So we, instead of going and trying to find that uh, appealing look that you want, you can take the camera out of the box with the default look and it's going to look more cinematic and natural, softer skin tone. Uh, so that's one of the major differences. Uh, and uh, we're, we're happy to have technology like it was in Venice to be able to learn from that to implement this in this camera. The other thing is because with the raw option on the original FS5, it makes it one of the most powerful high-speed cameras in the market. We're going to go include the HFR uh, 120 frame license and the raw output license with the FS5 Mark II out of the box. So uh, that's going to be included for the same price point as exists in FS5 today when it comes out. Uh, what that will allow you to do to take a 12 bit raw output and go to recorders like Atomos or Convergis Design and be able to record not only 4K 60p uh, and 240 frame in 2K continuous, but at this price point, there is really no other camera is able to do what this camera can do, which is 120 frame in 4K raw quality. It is a four second burst when you go to 4K, but still amazing. There is no other camera at this level that can do that. So these are a couple of powerful features that we're going to add in FS5 Mark II and we're very excited.